Uh, yeah, years ago, I used to work on a place called The Venue, a Victoria, done bands. Uh, there was three on the door and three inside. And yeah, the, the guy, it was really, really busy. I mean, when I say busy, I mean like three, four hundred people in there and maybe more, maybe even more. It depends on the bands, yeah? Sometimes you play twice a night, sometimes only once. So you got bands in there like Bad Manners, Madness. Uh, I mean, Marvin Gaye was in there. I mean, Marvin, I think, when I was there with Marvin Gaye, I don't think he played. He'd he come down to see it. Uh, I think he come down to see where Tina Turner was playing. Uh, yeah, there was uh, Freddie Mercury. Uh, there was another group called Joe, Joe Early. Um, I mean, I've had, listen, I've had some trouble. You, you can imagine, can't you? You've got five, all told, you've got six of us in there. When everybody's in there, and we come from the, we come from the door. And all the trouble you get on the door, you get bundles of trouble on the door, people trying to get in without paying. So it's more aggravation on the door as well. So when you get in, uh, all the pens is playing, and it's usually it's bad. So I was always on the uh, always on the on the on the stage door, making people say they can't get in. But you have massive speakers there, about eight foot, nine foot tall, by about four foot, five foot wide, and you can imagine the sound that comes out of that, and you've got to stand there. You know, most of it earplugs in the end. And when it kicked off, it kicked off. You know, on my life, mate. It's um, you know, I mean. I mean, I'm, I've been in there when it's like, it's six of us going in to three or 400 people. You know, you can imagine what it was like, you know, and we always, always used to go for the main ones, yeah? And many times I've been in there and we've all got, not smashed a piece, you know, sort of like we don't, we, we can't stand up. I'm on about, uh, we've got good audience from people, you know, when you've got only six of you going in, you've got like maybe 50, 60 people steaming into you. You know, luckily they really, really can't fight. I mean, all, all they're trying to do is get you on the floor to kick you and all that. And in them days, um, there was no plastic um, beakers or and that, you know. The bottles were glass. Uh, the beakers were glass. So you had that to look out for as well, yeah. And uh, we tried to stop them getting in with the bottles. Um, tried to just fill up, fill up the glass and that was it, yeah. But a lot of them got in with the bottles, so they're weapons by themselves, yeah. So all of a sudden the band starts and you get people jumping, trying to jump on the, on the stage. There's me running across there with other people and you've got people trying to get in the stage door, so it's a bit awkward. You know, so all night long you're running backwards and forwards and uh, then you're chucking people on stage. And believe it, mate, you get so much aggro. I mean, bad manners. I mean, bad manners was bad. I mean, really bad, uh, you know. And, you know, we had murders with that, mate. And that, that night there was more daggers and forks and knives on the floor than anything, you know, pins, big pins, you know, and, uh, yeah, it was crazy that night, mad. And when I was, um, I mean, I've told stories about Marvin Gaye. Marvin, this is, I mean, people um, who do YouTube, who do the channels, who've got their own channels, no one's done this, mate. No one's uh, worked like this in them sort of clubs or seen the people I've seen, you know. I mean, Marvin Gaye uh, and his, and his, and his uh, bouncers, or his minders, I mean, we have murders with them, and putting that guns in us and everything, you know what I mean? So, you know, they, there was a fight in, in, in the, one of the rooms when they got involved, you know? And I mean, to go out though, to go out on, on, on the floor and steam in, you know, when there's a, a row in the, on the floor, it, it's a bit, it's a bit nutty, you know what I mean? It doesn't, it, when it kicks off, it kicks off. And when we think that it's gonna kick or like that, and the stage door is might looked after by some women. Uh, they lock the lock the back of they lock they go in and lock the, the back of it so people can't get in, you know. And then we get what we do. We all stand by the stage. Uh, six of us stand by the stage, waiting for it to go, you know. And then if it goes, we straight in. Um, as I say, we've all we've all had um, really good items, you know. We've all had been got on the floor. We've all been kicked. We've all been kicked in, kicked at. You know what I mean? But a lot of them are only kids, you know. But you do get a, the one now and again. It's a bit nasty. The ones where you cross with a bottle or or a glass. Yeah, man. I've, I've had murders in there. Murders. I mean, sometimes uh, when you have two a night, that's when it becomes heavy. Two a night because you got one. You got one. The band comes in for maybe an hour, hour and a half. Have a break, and you get. They all come out. They all go out. Then you got another lot come in. It's trying to get them out. It's it's it's, it's, it's terrible. You know what I mean? Uh, and there's murders trying to get them out, and then the ones coming in trying to get coming again because it's off. 
on the door, there's always fights. I mean, when Joe Early was on, I mean, he was as nice as a footcake, you know. He got on the roof of the venue, which I've already said before, but he got on the roof of the venue and started chuck chucking down bottles of beer into into Victoria Road and, uh, you know, and cans also, you know. So there was, you know, chops of cars and everything. He's like a lunatic, so I had to go up there and try and get him down with um, a dustbin lid walking up the, the walking up the uh, the metal staircase and chucking chucking uh, big cans of drink at me, you know what I mean? And eventually I got my mate to come up as well, we got him down and then the roadies started. Oh, we've had some trouble with roadies, mate. Some of these roadies are massive, yeah? And they're on the road with all these people. And when they kick when it kicks off with them it kicks off because some are really leery. They don't want to do what you ask them to do. You know, don't go out there, don't do this, don't do that. They just do what they want to do. So you're having fights with, fights with them. And some of the rollers, as I say, are massive. The ones from Canada, uh, with Joe Early, they was all 19 stone, big beards, all country and western music, innit? And they were like a right handful, them ones. And uh, we won the day. I mean, Joe Early um, come in and smashed, smashed, went through a plate glass window. I jumped straight through it uh, in front of the venue because it used to be a big cinema. So imagine the big the big winners in the front. I uh, jumped straight through them, and uh, you know, and then there was a big punch up with with, with the roadies. Mate, the punch ups. The worst one was was uh, say Marvin Gay. Uh, Marvin Gay was on 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 the crack. He was on coke really really bad. He got on the crack. Um, someone in there was selling him the crack. My mate Fred. Uh, you know, he's died now, but he he uh he was selling the crack to Marvin Gaye, and Marvin Gaye, mate, he, you know, you give him an ounce or much more, mate, give him within two or three hours, he was back again for more, you know, and my mate didn't want to serve him because he wasn't getting no money out of it, he was only doing it like as a favour, and then Marvin Gaye started going into him, um, he wanted to fight my mate, and then the bouncers got involved. Uh, their minders, you know, so they started pulling, they pulled out a couple of guns on us, and then they were, they were getting clamps, and the guns were, took, it was like, it was a lot of Keith Stone Cop thing, you know what I mean? It was terrible, like a gang, proper gangster uh, movie, mate. I'm telling you, you, know, you can get shot and get killed easy with them people, you know, he ain't got nothing to lose, Marvin Gaye, what are you going to do with Marvin Gaye? Do you know what I mean? And Tina Turner, she was a lovely woman, Tina Turner, and she was nice, mate, I'm sure she was on, yeah, <laughs> she was like, so fit, mate. She was lunatic. And she loved us in the venue. She was all over us uh, in the venue. And I mean, the one that really loved me in the venue was uh, Freddie Mercury. Freddie Mercury, mate, he wouldn't leave me alone. You know, Freddie Mercury, like, he was like, he loved me, mate, me, mate, because I was all big, black, thick black hair, muscular as anything, you know what I mean? And he was on me. He would not leave me alone. I was only young, and, you know, 20 odd years of age. He was all over me, mate. Yeah. Freddie Mercury, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Some of the people you see in there, you know what I mean? And you know, it was like, it was uh, it was the best place to ever work. Uh, it was a good place to work, mate. We had good, good money. Uh, we done what we wanted to do. Richard Branston, uh, he wasn't bad. He got me in trouble. He got me nicked, Richard Branston, but that's, that's part of it, I suppose. I hit the wrong, I hit the wrong man. I hit one of his mates, uh, which I truly had done. And so his mate got Richard Branston to nick me. And uh, and that was it, I lost the job and everything, but good job to lose, mate. It was a good job to lose, you know. Um, I was gutted losing that job because there's so much money involved. You know, there was loads of money involved, mate. You could earn a fortune, earn a fortune on the doors. You could go to the back door, you know, someone on the door, making sure no one's going up to the back door, at the back of it, yeah. You got it open there, you got 10, 15, 20 people coming around. But what the thing you had to watch, was Barbara Dixon, the director. She used to get people um, coming in as that work for the venue, as such work for her, but big company in it. It's a big company, uh, Richard Branson plays the Virgin Records. It was massive, so you got people coming in that work, work for him, you know, and they was trying to give you money, so you had to be a bit careful. Uh, some of the doormen had been captured, got the sack. Uh, we was half sensible. We half knew who they were, the way they were, the way they worked it. You know, um, you could earn, then you could earn under pound a night. You know, I mean, the wages 
was good, but you can imagine, on the panel night, um, it was quite good for us, you know what I mean, That it, when that was, yeah, in them days. And, um, you know, then, I, I mean, don't forget, I had, I had nearly three jobs in, you know what I mean? I had, I had Crispins, I had Luckies, and I had um, the venue Victoria. Yeah, man, I was earning good money, you know, good money, but I, I earned it. Uh, but trouble, to have trouble in the venue uh, was very dangerous, mate. It was a dangerous, dangerous place to have trouble. Uh, it was an old cinema, so a lot of them used to get upstairs uh, to the seats up on the top, you know, which they weren't allowed to be up there. Uh, that was going to be turned into like a restaurant thing, but at the time it was closed down, didn't let no one up to the balcony because of the groups, you know, people jumping over the side. and. Uh, so when they was up there, we had to get them out of there. Um, some of them tried to climb over, over the side. And you know, you're hitting someone up there, mate, you can easily fall off easy, so you've got to be really careful. And you're going to have quite bad fights up there. Really bad fights, yeah. I've had, I mean, we had, um, we had some, when I say bad fights, we've had some bad fights um, with people. You know, I've never seen anybody stabbed. I've seen, I've not stabbed, stabbed, you know, not with a knife, maybe with a glass and all that, you know, and a bottle, but I've never seen any big knives being pulled out and them sort of things, you know. And people we was working on the door, we was half sensible, so we'd run people run people down and take what they had. Obviously some took come and some some are gonna get you through, goes without saying, you know what I mean? But I didn't see anybody stabbed. Uh, lots of glasses, lots of bottles, uh, across the head. Um bottles, glasses, I mean it's just a normal thing, you know what I mean? Because we used to wear hats you know, and to, to be hit with a bottle or stab with a glass was nothing, you know, it was just one of the things that happened, you know. I mean, Dorman, I mean, there's Dorman on, on, on my channel now that know what doors are like, you know, when you're on doors, but if you go on a door like the, well, the bands or big bands, it's it's hard work, mate. It's hard work, good money, you can earn good money, but you can also get killed very easy. You know, as you rush in, five or six you rush in, and when bad manners was on, what, well, mate, that was the worst night, um, madness or something. It was just, they're all crazy. You know, they all come in, them young kids, mate, they come in to cause problems. Uh, and when you're on that stage, mate, you know, on the front of the stage, try and keep them off the stage, they're all jumping on it. And then they, they rush you, you know, quite a lot, say 10, 15 of them in Russia. You don't know what they've got in their hands. You know, as I say, I've never seen a knife, but I've always seen glasses, bottles, and all that, you know. So you know you're gonna, you know you're gonna get it with a bottle. You know that you're gonna get it with a bottle. You know you're gonna get it with a glass. You know that it's in the, in the chest and all around it. You've got big jackets on, so it's, it saves all that, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I mean, I've had some terrible fights in there. I mean, to, I mean, yeah, what I like is what I've done in my life, you know. And to do that, come on, work, work in that sort of place and meet them sort of people. It's in my book about Marvin Gaye, you know, about Joe Early and all that. I mean, Joe Early made a record about the venue. Yeah, he did, yeah, about us security working at the venue and the way we why we dealt with him. Uh, Marvin Gaye, um, he was on that case, mate. He was on that case. Um, it's very easy to get killed with, with Marvin Gaye. And his, uh, his bodyguards, I think they, they must have had some, um, must have been, been allowed to carry guns, you know, because if there wasn't, you're going to be killed easy, you know what I mean? But they was, they had permits, I should imagine, to carry guns. And to see him, Marvin Gaye, you know, it was like, it's just so beautiful, you know, to see him walk in, stand there, my mate served him up. He went away, come back for some more steers on a crack, out of his nut, uh, his body, his minders, was all big, six foot four, maybe even bigger on that, and as wide as what they were big. So when they had to go, we had to really give it them, mate, and you know, but when they pulled out their thinking guns, and my mate Fred grabbed the gun, and then it just kicked off, yeah, and then we steamed into them, and we won the day. I mean, we beat them, we beat them, but um, we could have got ourselves in a lot, a lot of trouble. They could have come back later, but they didn't. Uh, Marvin Gamer says they just walked away. My mate Fred uh, gave him another ounce, sold him another ounce, so all that trouble for nothing, you know. Uh, parents people, parents people, mate. Um, when they done a big venue down there, parents people, um, Legs and Co, I think it was, I'm not quite sure. 
because they've done a big thing, they've done a dancing thing. And they was on the stage, they kept coming up and getting changed into different, different clothes. And being that I was there, it was nice, you know what I mean? But one of the band's people, I forget her name now, um, she lived below me in Kingston uh, for a while. And uh, yeah, she was absolutely stunning. She was stunning. The flat was downstairs, so I let her go in the flat downstairs, you know. But she was stunning, mate. She left everything. Every bit of furniture she had in that flat, we took, I took. There's a guy, I'm trying to get a guy on my show, uh, Gordon, um, big guy. He does, uh, he's on the Dartmoor. He does um, archery. He teaches people how to do archery, axe, throw axes and knives and all that. Uh, he's he's uh, he's big in the game. He was, he was MA, MA fighter, proper MA fighter. Um, I'm going to try and get him in my show, uh, on my channel. He wants to do a thing for kids, for a charity thing for kids. Uh, what the kids, how do the kids go, how do they get, get violent, what makes them get violent. Uh, either quick talk to him, um, saying, I believe, personally myself, that kids, you know, or men, uh, who start as a bit older, or being sexually, physically abused, you know, or mentally abused, mate, you know, it doesn't have to be sexually. It can be mentally, physically, it can be, you know, being bashed up, you know, mentally, dis mentally being punished mentally can change kids into violence, you know. Um, me being sexually abused myself as a young kid, uh, that I think that made me, a, made me the way I've been in my life, made me a violent man, uh, but you can't help it, it's, it's, it's set in you, it's like set in stone, you know. Yeah, he's set in stone, mate. And my, my mate's trying to do a big thing about it, you know? Big charity thing for kids. To try and keep kids off the street. Um, it's one of the hardest things to try and do, to get kids off the street, the way things are today anyway. There's no money about um, for kids. Um, you know, everybody else, I mean, you're getting, I know it shouldn't be, not a lot, it's not, it shouldn't really be said, but a lot of these foreign nationals get too much and when they get too much, they leave their own out, yeah? They leave their own people out, and they get everything, we get nothing. But that's how it is. I mean, someone's getting a fortune out of it, and it's, um, you know, anyway. Uh, yeah, um, clubs, right, on the doors of clubs. There's plenty, of, I mean, there's plenty of people on my, on my channel who are ex uh, you know, have gone through the same things worse, worse than I've gone through, you know? I mean, I've been stabbed, you know, I've been bottled, I've been hit across the with baseball bats, you know, and things like that. And, you know, everyone, we've all gone through that. We've all gone through that, you know, and we're still here. Do you know what I mean? And door, on the door, and it's, uh, it's not bad money, but it's aggro. It's aggro, and you get it every night. I used to get it every night in Crispin's, Lucky's, and every night in the venue. Uh, the venue was worse than any club, you know, any club, because there's too many people to get in. In a club, you might get 100 people, 150 people. Uh, in a venue like that, two, three, four, five hundred 500 people, you know, and you've got to control 500 people with six men. It's virtually impossible. Uh, obviously, when a big band comes on, like Madness and Bad Manners, you know, as you know there's going to be aggro. Uh, we used to employ a couple of big guys to come in. I also had some guys to come in. I was only young myself, but we had to handle it. You had to handle it, mate. And you knew from the time that door's open until the time the door's shut, you are getting problems. Even when that door's shut, people are kicking the doors, trying to get in, and the back doors, and this, that, and the other, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's always aggro. Then you get people trying to come. Oh, what? I remember being there one day, it's my mum say you think of things that eh? I remember being there one day, mate, and uh, some guys rubbed run in, tall up, uh, gunned up uh, to rob the venue. It was an inside sort of thing what what went on. They went they knew where to go. They knew to go downstairs. Uh, downstairs was the money place where they held all the money, big safes down there. And they come in all tall up uh, to rob it, all balaclawed up. And uh, it's like listen, when you work there 
as a doorman, you don't want to get involved in it, in that sort of thing, you know what I mean? Because most of the doormen that I work with, that's their game, that used to be their game, you know what I mean? So you don't want to get involved, you know? But um, you got, then you've got Richard Branson, you've got Barbara Dixon all shouting out, or whatever, so yeah, you've got to get involved. Um, just make sure that don't pull their masks off, make sure you can get the guns if you can, or whatever, and just get them out. They didn't get away with nothing. I mean, I was there the night that they come in, all gunned up, you know, to take the parcel. And they come out and stuck, mate. But, and the parcel was big. It was a big, big, it was had to be inside a bit of work. The parcel was big. The parcel, uh, there was nearly a week's takings in that safe, mate. And it was a big, big safe. And it was a big bands that had been on. You know, you got pet madness and bad manners when they were on for two or three days, you can imagine, can't you? It's fortunes going in that safe, you know what I mean? Yeah, and they got, anyway, they got away. The guys got away, but they didn't get away with no money. Uh, yeah, so anyway, bang, bang, they all go all night, but it's a nice one.